In this episode, we're going to have a look at cash warming, what it is, why we would want to do it, some common issues that we may have around it, as well as its implementation. If we look at the DevTools, you can see that this particular request took three seconds to load. And if we refresh the page, you'll see it's spinning and it took about three seconds again. And that is because on this calculation for the number of users, I've put in a sleep timer at three seconds to simulate something which could be a heavy calculation. And similar on the users page, if we load this up, each one of these rows is a separate partial and you can see that we have about a two second delay on each one of those partials in loading. And so the basic idea of cache warming is that we'll cache each one of these rows of data so the next time we come to it, it won't take so long to load. But where cache warming comes into play is if we edit one of these records, then that cache would no longer be valid, it would be stale, and those expensive calculations would have to happen again. So the cache warming will queue up a background job which will re-render that partial and in turn regenerating that cache. So you don't have to wait for a user input in order for that cache to be built, it'll automatically be built in the background. And this also has the added benefit that you could create a rate task which would go through and do your cache warming. So everything is getting loaded up in your cache before a user even makes the first request. And so if you do have a lot of records that are doing a lot of calculations and you're already using caching, but you noticed when a user makes an update or the data changes and that cache becomes stale and the next request takes a bit longer, this may be a feature that you want to consider adding into your application. And so to experience what this would look like, if we refresh the page, it'll initially build out the cache as we see on the right hand side. And then if we refresh the page again, it loads almost instantly. If we edit a user record, and before I hit save, I'm going to clear the screen. We'll update the record, and then we can see an active job queuing up and then rendering out that partial. So when we go back to our list of users, the page is updated, and it was still very quick to respond. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? So be sure to check that out and use the promo code RUBY for free shipping within the United States. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.